And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're here each week discussing topical issues and meeting interesting guests. And this week we have a guest who's not only interesting, but he can discuss on topical issues one after another. Well, he can. We've entitled the show uh, Scott Meacham, a man of letters and numbers. He is our state treasurer. He serves in the governor's cabinet uh, for finance matters. Uh, he has uh, had a lot to do with the things that have gone on in this last legislative session and before. And we're pleased to welcome him back. He's going to talk about the, how the Oklahoma economy is doing. And, uh, well, there's just so many things we can go on. I'm, I'm going to be quiet so we can get Scott out here. Right. You're watching The Verdict. Scott Meacham, today's guest. We'll be right back. In driving rain, blistering heat, and bitter cold, 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, Chesapeake drills nonstop for natural gas on American soil. Chesapeake drills more new gas wells than anyone else, and from those wells collects the most drilling information and acquires more 3D seismic images, leveraging every efficiency to improve the odds of finding more natural gas every day with every well we drill. The better job we do of discovering bigger reserves of clean, burning American natural gas, the greater the prosperity of our nearby communities, our state, and our nation. And as long as there are more gas reserves to be found here in the U.S., we will never rest. Chesapeake. Natural gas wins the day. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. What if someone you meet online sends a message that makes you feel uncomfortable? Tell a parent or teacher right now. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Hi, this is James Garner. Hi, this is Reba McIntyre. Hi, this is Johnny Bench. Hi, I'm Barry Switzer. Hey, everybody, this is Vince Gill. Welcome to my home state of Oklahoma, where we'll be celebrating 100 years of statehood in 2007. Our strength is our people, and the 2,100 Oklahomans from the Cox Communications family are proud to be part of Oklahoma's story. Cox and Oklahoma, true partners. Happy birthday, Oklahoma. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers, and Kent's going to introduce today's guest. We are very pleased to welcome back to The Verdict for another visit, the Honorable Scott Meacham, the State Treasurer of the State of Oklahoma. He's the 17th person to occupy that position as State Treasurer, and he's also in the Governor's Cabinet as Secretary for Finance and Revenue. Uh, Scott did his undergraduate work uh, and law work at the University of Oklahoma, where he obtained an undergraduate degree as well as an MBA and, of course, a law degree. He's been a banker out in Elk City, uh, has been uh, done some financial planning, and now he's doing financial planning for all of us for the state of Oklahoma. This is his second visit to the verdict. Scott, welcome back. Thank you. It's great to be here. Glad You've be had here. a little time to assess the 2007 legislative session. What were your thoughts? Well, you know, the governor likes to say we heard a lot of the noise of democracy this <laughs> session. That, that's certainly the case. It, it was historic session in, in the fact that we had a power sharing arrangement in the Senate. We had an equally divided Senate, equal numbers of Democrats and Republicans, and of course a, a Republican controlled House. And so it was a historic session. And, and really considering that and considering the, the potential for problems, it really went remarkably well. Uh, Tell us a little bit about the budget process this year. Was it the same as you have experienced in prior years, or did it have a different flavor to it? 
No, it was it was very different this year, and, and but you know honestly, it seems to go in a different way every single session. But this year was was different in the fact that the legislative leaders kind of got together without the governor and made a deal, and, and then sort of announced the deal uh, and told the governor about it just literally a few days before they announced it, and sort of expected him to sign off on it. And he said, "Wait a second, I've got some problems. There's some issues you haven't addressed," and he ended up vetoing the the entire budget and making them kind of go over, go back and start over. Well, and then after they did that uh, retake on the budget and we we uh, had one in place, governor signed it. Uh, what's your take on that budget? Is that a you think a pretty good one? I think so. I think I think uh, it addressed all the major needs. Um, I'm a little concerned that we didn't put enough money in corrections. Um, I, I'm a, I'm a little bit concerned we may be having to come back in special session for that, but uh, uh, we got uh, additional money into higher ed to keep our tuition increases below double digits. We were able to uh, continue our, our commitment to get our teachers to the regional average in teacher pay, uh, operating monies in education, and, 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 and some new innovative type things um, like the biofuels initiative that, that we started, we were able to get funded. Let's talk about economic development, the Opportunity Fund, the EDGE Fund. What's your take on where we are here in, in July 07? Well, I, I, those have proven to be very valuable tools to the state. The uh, Opportunity Fund, you know, we had a little bit of problem with a court challenge that kind of held it up, but, but we funded some big projects in Tulsa, uh, some big project, a big project in Ardmore. We're getting ready to fund a big project uh, here in Oklahoma City, the Oklahoma Medical Research and Foundation new research tower. Um, we're actually using it for a, a, an economic development initiative that's been in the paper recently that's occurring here in Oklahoma City. Um, so it, it's a very valuable tool. Unfortunately, we didn't get any more money in it uh, this last legislative session, so we're out of money now. We need to, I think, get some more money in it. The other one is the EDGE Research Endowment, and the, and the goal there is to make Oklahoma the research capital of the Plains and, and to create a billion dollar research endowment. We got $150 million in it so far. I'm chairman of the board of investors that invest that money. We've just started getting that process set up. We just met last week. We just certified about $6.7 million that can, can go to, to fund research in Oklahoma. Again, we didn't get any more money in it this session out of the legislature, which we need to continue to do, but I think both of those are going to be significant long-term tools for Oklahoma to help us diversify our mm -hmm. economy. Well, if, if, if revenue comes in above expectations, why not put more money into it? What, 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 uh, what reasons were you given? Oh, you know, what happens is, is uh, everybody has all, there's all these competing interests at the capital. And, and, and sort of the capital is where all these different interest groups meet. And, and some of those interest groups want money. Some of those interest groups want tax breaks, and, and they all meet at the Capitol, and everybody sort of jostles for a limited number of dollars. And, and, and this year, for whatever reason, those two needs kind of got squeezed out for some other needs. And again, hopefully next year we can get that corrected. Well, it's all uh, contingent on the, the state of the economy. What is the tax revenue coming in? Uh, tell our viewers generally, as you see it, what is the state of the Oklahoma economy this year? Our economy is continuing to do very well. We will, this year, for the third time in the state's history, we will max out our rainy day fund and we'll have a surplus of over $200 million above and beyond that. I think the rate of growth has slowed down just a little bit from what we saw the past three years, but it's certainly continuing to grow and revenues are, again, several hundred million dollars above where they were the prior year. And, and, and we do have now the luxury of having a, a full rainy day fund with almost uh, $600 million in it. Let me follow up on that just a minute. Uh, we see on national, national news reports and the like, uh, the real estate market nationally, uh, probably in some areas more than others, being uh, pretty much in the doldrums with lots of foreclosures. Do you see any of that uh, uh, taking place in Oklahoma? Well, I think, I think we're starting to see nationwide and in Oklahoma some uptick in, you know, the levels of past dues on loans. We're starting to see uh, a buildup in inventory of, of commercial space. Um, so, so we are seeing that. Fortunately, Oklahoma's economy is broad enough that, you know, the real estate sector doesn't really lead our economy. Uh, we're very much an energy-based state. The energy sector is continuing to lead our economy, but we're starting to diversify, like biosciences here in in Oklahoma, aeronautics in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. And, and when you have a diversified economy, when one sector starts to slow down, then you don't feel it like they do in some areas. 
You mentioned the rainy day fund had been maxed out. How is it determined? What's the basis for determining how you max out the rainy yeah. day fund? Under our constitution, the, the cap is 10% of, of what they call the general revenue budget, basically 10% of the state's right. budget. So each year when the state budget increases, uh, then that, that number increases each year. So we'll make about another $70 million deposit in it this year to reflect the increase in the size of the budget last year. So, yeah, we do the same thing in the city. It's the same way we determine mm -hmm. it. I didn't know if that was consistent or not. Well, if we max out the rainy day fund and still have $200 million uh, sitting around, and the legislature doesn't do anything with it. Does it just sit there and earn interest until uh, the next session? Basically, that's what happens. It, it, it uh, becomes cash that we invest, you know, in the treasurer's office, then it, it just carries over to the next session. What are the correction needs that you were talking about? Well, I mean, obviously we have a, a, a huge inmate population in this state. Um, our, our, at our second fastest growing expense over the last 10 years has been corrections. The first, as you might guess, would be the state's Medicaid program because of the increase in health care costs. But the second is our, our corrections because our population, our inmate population continues to go up. Health care costs for those inmates continue to go up and other costs associated with that continue to go up. So each year it's been a struggle since I've been in state government to come up with the additional money to sort of feed the monster. Yeah. And, and again, this year uh, the legislature is trying to really hold, keep a tight leash on them and I think it may be a little bit too too tight. We'll see if we have to come back in November or December and give them any extra money. I, I know we're going to have to give them a supplemental at the first and next session. If, if you don't know this answer, fine, but if, if the number of inmates remain stagnant from one year to the next, what would the cost of increase be that you would need to fund corrections at the same level of, of service? Well, I think it, that would be dependent, of course, upon your sort of your inflationary costs, like your your cost of, of medical care. Medical care g is getting to be a bigger and bigger factor. And the state and is responsible for the medical care of all those inmates, 100 percent. That's exactly There's, right. Uh, for example, Medicaid. They have, they have a much better insurance policy than you or I do. Oh, Fred. sure they do. I mean, I mean, Medicaid <laughs> is will not pay on inmates that are in state's custody. Yeah. So we can get inmates that would otherwise qualify for Medicaid that once we take them into custody, they become the state's responsibility. I didn't realize that. we got to take a break. Yep. We're visiting with State Treasurer Scott Meacham. We'll be right back. You're watching The Verdict. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel. It didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. All children deserve a life of hope and love, but sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all the quality, assistance, and representation that can be offered in our legal system. For more information, call 23CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. following your favorite teams all season long. Hi, this is James Garner. Hi, this is Reba McIntyre. Hi, this is Johnny Bench. Hi, I'm Barry Switzer. Hey, everybody, this is Vince Gill. Welcome to my home state of Oklahoma, where we'll be celebrating 100 years of statehood in 2007. Our strength is our people. 
and the 2100 Oklahomans from the Cox Communications family are proud to be part of Oklahoma's story. Cox and Oklahoma, true partners. Happy birthday, Oklahoma. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're visiting today with State Treasurer Scott Meacham. There's been some level of reform in your office and in the state government in general. What, what dividends are, are, are coming out of those reforms? Well, you know, but when I became State Treasurer, my goal was to just do everything better. You know, raise the bar in the Treasurer's office. And, and the main thing we do is manage the people's money. I mean, we have almost $5 billion of, of your money that we manage. And, uh, we wanted to improve the return on that and maintain the safety. The year before I came into office, we earned $50 million on that $5 billion. The first year, we doubled that to about $100 million. This year, the final numbers aren't in yet, but we'll, we'll be a little over $140 million. Wow. Next year, we ought to be over $150. So we've almost tripled what we're earning the taxpayers on their money. We're renegotiating service contracts. We've saved probably a, a cumulative fifteen twenty million dollars just on contracts that that we've renegotiated in the treasurer's office so we've done a lot within the office and I've also been fortunate because I'm the governor's sec secretary of financial revenue to be able to work on some some things outside the office and there's been a, a number that we've worked on but one in particular I want to focus on today because it, it it's I think will pay such long-term dividends and that was one that had a tax increase and a tax cut in it it was the tobacco tax increase the tax cut that people don't really realize is we eliminated the capital gains on Oklahoma-based property to encourage investors to invest in the state versus outside the state. So that obviously yields dividends of capital coming into our, into our communities. The tobacco tax increase, on the other hand, funded our trauma system and our health care system, but also we got over 30,000 Oklahomans to quit smoking. So I think that will yield long-term dividends also. Well, I know you're also involved in the Oklahoma College Savings Plan. Tell us about that, uh, having a, a child in college. I'm a little interested in hearing this. Uh, uh, what about the Oklahoma College Savings Plan? Well, what I like to tell people is it's simply the best way there is to save for college because the state of Oklahoma says to you that if you establish one of these plans, we'll let you write off up to $20,000 per family, $10,000 per in individual annually for contributions you make to it on your income taxes. It grows free of any federal or state tax, and we pull it out as long as you use it for college tuition, room or board, any of those associated expenses, career tech, anywhere, then, this, then there's absolutely no tax. So it's a tax-free way to pay for college. For state tax? State, well, the growth in it's free of federal tax also. Hmm. Well, are you having, uh, ha well, how does one get started in that? Do you have to sign up? How do you get recognized as being a participant? It's very simple. You can go online. In fact, there's a link on the treasurer's website, www.treasurer.ok.gov. You can go online. It's a simple form you fill out online, or if you want to get a number and call in, you can call in and talk to somebody, or you know, however you want to handle it. It's very simple to do. And, and, and what we're trying to do is even expand the opportunities now and allow for the first time ever brokers to sell the Oklahoma College Savings Plan. So you can go to your broker. And, and get signed up with the Oklahoma College Savings Plan. You mentioned the uh, rate of return that you're getting on the state's money and how that compares to previous years. I, I'm wondering what other, what trends are there nationwide that I, I know, I can only imagine the creativity that is now getting into these types of endeavors and trying to increase the, the annual rate because we're talking some big numbers here, some mm -hmm. big zeros, and anything you can do to tick that up is going to help the state. What trends are there out there? Well, I think you have to be sort of careful because you have to have a balance. With state funds, you need to be very conservative. And in fact, our, our statutes say that we can only invest in government securities and, and basically very secure type, type of investments, and that's good. But what you're seeing is a lot of states are kind of pushing the envelope and, and chasing those returns, as you mm -hmm. see. And we see, we see states that are selling off their tobacco endowments. Um, that's gone on in several states where they've got these tobacco settlement funds coming in and they just basically go sell those to somebody. Or they're selling off major assets like their turnpike systems yeah. and things like well, that. Tell me about that. What, what's your opinion on that? Well, you know, if you think about it, think about logically. If you have a turnpike that, that you're, you're charging somebody a certain amount of money for and you go sell it to another group, how are they going to pay for that? Well, they're going to have to up the, up the tolls. And, and I think most people think that the tolls on our turnpikes are plenty high today and, and really wouldn't be in favor of something that's going to increase 
those tolls. I mean, it, obviously it gives you some one-time money that you could do some good with, but I think there's going to be a lot of public pushback from the increase in tolls that might result. Uh, Mick and I were very interested to, when we invited you on to understand that you had something to do with the Unclaimed Property Act. That's uh, right. I guess Mick and I have some unclaimed property. That well, we searched, and unfortunately, <laughs> you guys hadn't lost any of your money. But but we do have for 175, I mean, 350, 350,000 Oklahomans. That's right. We have 175 million dollars. So your your odds of us having money for you are about one in ten, which is a lot better than your odds of winning the lottery. Well, let's stay on that before we go to the lottery. Um, how does uh, a viewer uh, find out whether they have unclaimed property or not? Well, there, there's several ways to do it. Again, you can go to our website and there's actually a thing where you can search your name, your family members names, friends names, anybody you want and it'll kind of walk you through the process if you find something. We we do our new names, you see those those pot of gold things we, we put out periodically. Well, those are only our most recent names. So, you know, you could have older names that are still in the database or we do booths at, at both the Oklahoma City and, and Tulsa State Fairs. Um, so it's a lot of different ways. Let's say that uh, a sum of money has remained with the state for uh, many years, never claimed. Is, does there come a time when that ended and it uh, escheats or goes to the state? No, Oklahoma is not an escheat state. In fact, most states in the United States, contrary to popular belief, are not escheat states. We hold it in a perpetual trust. Uh, for the person and, and obviously you know some people say well you know maybe you ought to cut that off after 50 years or so because probably after 100 years if somebody hadn't claimed their property they're not going to show up but uh, but that's the way the statutes work today. You mentioned Oklahoma has made some strides in diversifying the economy. Is there a way to quantify that? Is the energy sector less important to Oklahoma's economy in general than it was say five years ago? I think the best way to quantify that is that we all know that natural gas prices, which Oklahoma is so dependent on natural gas prices, have dropped significantly from their highs of, of two or three years ago. Yet our economy continues to expand and move forward. And what that tells me is that other sectors are picking up the slack. Um, you know, it was a horrible loss for Oklahoma City to lose the GM plant. Yet we see that, that the, the economy of Oklahoma City barely hiccuped mm -hmm. uh, when that occurred. And what that shows you is, is that you're growing in other areas that's sort of offsetting some of that negative. Mm -hmm. Well, is there reason to believe that the energy sector is less cyclical than previous generations? Because we've gone through this boom and bust mentality with the energy sector in general. Do you believe that in 2007, because of worldwide demand and some other factors, that the energy sector is a little uh, more bulletproof than it's been in the past? I think because it's a commodity there will always be variability, but I think you may be correct that there is less probably depth of the cycle than there used to be, and I think a lot of that has to do with worldwide demand with China and some of these other developing nations coming on board. A lot of it could have to do with all the hedging that goes on, which sort of has the, has the role of keeping prices in a narrow band. Um, there's a lot of things like that that, that uh, go into play, but you know, again, we do have to remember it is a commodity and, and it will vary in price. Scott, you ran uh, statewide for state treasurer uh, in this most recent election and, and won. What's the future hold for Scott Meacham? Gosh, I, I quit trying to plan out my future a long time ago. I thought, first I thought I was going to be a lawyer, then I thought I was going to be a banker. I've never thought I was going to be a politician for very long. So, you know, my plan is to uh, give a few years service to my state. Again, try to leave it a little better than I found it. and. Uh, kind of go back and resume my quieter life one of these days. <laughs> State Treasurer Scott Meacham, thanks for coming back on thanks. The Verdict. Thanks Thank you. Kent and I will have a final word after this. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. 
Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record. Since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. Never give your name, phone, address, or password to anyone you met online, and always keep your personal information private. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Are you the one looking for an exciting new career? If so, we are the one looking for you. We are Cox Communications, and we are searching for field service representatives. FSRs interact and perform services at our customers' home. Sound like the job for you? Then some of the things you need are a high school diploma and a good driving record. But for complete job description and qualification, go to jobs at cox.com. Welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers. We're wrapping up a show with Oklahoma State Treasurer Scott Meacham. I thought today he said that the economy is still strong in the state of Oklahoma, that it appears the state has diversified its economy, but a reminder that the energy sector is still a commodity and that's vulnerable to tendencies to go up and down. But overall, I think Scott agrees that you know there's a worldwide demand for energy that may not have existed in previous generations, and we may not have the severe ups and downs of the energy sector looking ahead. Well, he also pointed out, uh, it may have been off camera, that uh, the natural gas price uh, today is down from what it was two or three years ago, but, and yet uh, our state revenue uh, continues to uh, grow up. Uh, to uh, new levels, mm -hmm. uh, meet the rainy day fund, and have some $200 million left over. Yeah. That's a pretty healthy uh, state of affairs. Well, he's, a, he's a good guest. Um, a website to remind you about if you want to hear more about Scott Meacham and his office, it's treasurer.ok.gov, and our website is theverdict.tv. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next week on The Verdict. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.